Hello, good afternoon. My name is Kathy Novicki and I'm the founder of Champions Over Cancer. And if you have been following this um, Facebook Live challenge, then you are familiar with the story and I'm grateful for that. If, if you have not been following it, I'll tell you what it is. It is a 90-day Facebook Live challenge for uh, my that was um, suggested to me to um, introduce my business, Champions Over Cancer, to the internet. I guess you would say. Um, and I I've learned several things along the way. And considering that this is day 20, I thought I'd just look back, I have an itchy nose, which my mother used to say and would have a fight. But I got my hair done, so that's good. Still got the zit going on, but I'm good with that. Um, so, so we're going to look back at what I've learned. It's hard. You have, every day, you've made a commitment, so you have to, to do it. That speaks to your character, it speaks to your integrity, which speaks to a business that you are, that I'm trying to grow. And given the fact that it is a um, new, mm, not a new issue, but it's, it's just a new way of looking at the population, the individuals who are cancer free or who are in remiss in remission. Um, this can Champions Over Cancer is a platform that we're building to connect people that have been affected by cancer or cancer free people or even people that are going through it um, treatment at that time if they wish. It's to connect people with experts and services that might they might need in relation to issues that they're ha that they're that they are that are coming to light due to a diagnosis or involvement of the family or or friends if it's just good friends because when you have cancer your whole family has cancer and um it's it can be quite overwhelming and my husband and I have been through it it has been I've been cancer free for six years and diagnosed for seven um, and I am still knock on wood cancer free um, and I have seen I have been above the grass to see things that I am very very grateful that I've seen I've seen um, my daughter graduate from college, I've seen my son graduate from high school, I've seen proms, and and yeah, the two puppies that came into our life at 10 weeks old while I was packing our home and moving and working as, as an RN. If you don't follow us, you didn't know that. And we were negotiating our last nurse's contract, so she, my daughter just thought, What's, what's a little more stress in my life? So, but we'll just put that behind us and um, say that it is all a learning, a learning experience. And it's just, for me, it's a different learning experience because I don't have a business background. And so this 90 day challenge was, was a way to introduce me to the consistencies of of talking about my business, of being out there, of people, um, you know, finding me and starting to listen and, you know, going wide. We've, um, I think it's 14 new members that um, have, are following our Facebook page since, well, tw 20 days ago. I, I think that's pretty good. And um, so the second half, well, that's what that's what part of the learning process was in in the twenty days. It has t 
talking about it has helped me to trim down my bullet points as to what our mission is. And it's not only trimmed it down, but it they've changed, they've evolved. And I think that's, that's a good thing. What I didn't realize was that um, so much of the acute care um, experience would still be discussed or present in in the business and I guess because my passion is the cancer free part because I believe that it is it is a, a population uh, in the cancer spectrum that is not being um, is not being well um, served. I think it, it's a thir I know it's a 13 million plus growing um, population in the United States for people who've had cancer. It's 30 million worldwide and you know there are a lot of ramifications that come with a cancer diagnosis and and we've experienced some of them. Um, I lost my job, we lost our home, um, we had to short sale it back to the bank. You know, um, you have surgeries, you look different, um, your relationships change, people, um, people come and go in your life, and um, after you're done with acute therapy, you know, it can become very lonely because you still need to recover and people think that, oh, you know, you're done with therapy, you're starting to look better, your hair's growing back, that, ooh, boom, you're back you'll be able to do everything that you normally did before and it nothing is ever normal again in regards to your old life and that's and that's what uh, the you know the premise is real is coming down to you know dealing with issues that might arise or you might have and you know getting them getting together you know hooking people up with with experts and um, services so that they can address those issues and hopefully put them behind them so that they can close that door on the chapter of their life. It'll always be there, which is what I'm finding. You can, but you can close it and you can walk through, close it, and it's, it's a new playing field. You start again, you have the second opportunity to to grow, to learn, to dream, to do anything that it is that you want. And and that I think that's really hard. I know it's really hard to do when you've just gone through a year of hell yourself and you've dragged your family with you. Uh, and then, you know, people expect everything to be all fine and good again. And you're you're there and it's like, uh, you know, what now? So, so that's what, that's what we're all about. And the hard knocks are just the things that I've learned, you know, along the way. A, you can get totally lost on Facebook, just like you can the internet. And you have to you have to put a limit on yourself on the time that you're there because otherwise you won't get anything else done. And because I am technologically challenged, I can defibrillate you, but I just learned how to fax last week. Um, it, you know, it takes, you know, I get caught up in it because I am not as cognizant of it. So I have to, you know, put a time limit on that. You can waste a lot of time. What works? Well, um, I have found, you know, you have to title each one, and um, sometimes that can be a challenge, and t some titles work better than others. Some titles catch people's, um, catch people's attention, and they click in. If it's not what they're looking for or interested in, they, they you know, just go right back out. S but sometimes people click in for whatever reason, and then they start listening and something, you know, they connect with something. And so, you, you know, you, you have, 
you've got another person that has a whole network of contacts that they have and that and that is the you know that that is the desired effect because the the only way to grow a movement that is um, not in the forefront of people's minds it's it's in the forefront of my mind but um, the forefront of your mind is to get people to get the conversation going and and when somebody clicks in and stays and listens they you know they connect with you and we ask people to um, click the link to join and it takes you to our website and you know that's so it's one more person that is that is looking at the website and that person has you know has a network of people that they they potentially would share with and and we ask them to share with it because I I think everyone has been um, know someone who's had cancer, been touched by um, someone close to them that has had cancer or has had cancer themselves. And it, it's, it's unfortunate. That is, it's a very, it's, it's a very common um, place. Those three, those three categories are very common place, unfortunately. So, um... <sighs> you grow wide, that's what I was just talking about, and that's what we want to do, because um, I truly believe that with the the advent and the popularity of, of, of social media and the growth of technology, that something like this can be global. Um, it doesn't have to be face-to-face. -face. You know, there are certain things that... Um, you would want to do face to face and people have different um levels of comfort and so therefore you know you can you can um connect them with someone who will is what they need and they can work it out amongst themselves how they would approach it um so it's it's kind of like a um, you know, a Chinese a la carte menu where, you know, there are issues, um, there are services, there are experts, and, and we, you know, we, we have been networking with people um, vigorously over the past several years, even though we've only been, um, we've only had the business up for a little over a year. But you can't offer certain things unless you have people to to refer to so it's like I said all a learning process and I said before that your vision your your vision be, your vision changes it becomes clearer and with repetition you get you get more comfortable talking about it which as a nurse and I'm, I know my husband across the room is good to go oh no she said it again but um you know, as a nurse, I, I never feel that I'm selling myself. Um, and he, and when I've spoken about, you know, the business, it, it feels like, you know, you're, you're selling yourself because people will follow you, not necessarily the business. It, it's the experience. It's, your in, it's the engagement. And um, so Jay says all the time, well, you sell yourself every day at work. No, I'm not pimping myself out. That would be Jay's job. Um, you know, when you talk to a patient, when you have to, you know, you have to do something as simple as starting an IV, you know, you don't just grab a patient's arm and stick a needle in it. Um, you know, you have to say, okay, I, I really need, we really need another IV. I'm going to go and, and get the stuff. And, you know, and, and you are asking in in a perhaps a nonverbal way, but you know if they say oh, I don't want another IV, well you, then you have to get into the next level and you have to say, listen, you know you're getting this medication and it doesn't, it I can't hang I can't hang your antibiotics because they don't um, the two the two the two drugs can't mix in the same IV, so therefore that's why you need 
a second line and you know along those lines so he says you really are you know you know making a sales pitch to a patient because if they don't want it you can't make them do it, it you know but so much of that depends on on the scenario and the situation so um but i just hadn't i just never thought of it that way before i never you know it's it's more i come at it more from you know a health and wellness point of view as as opposed to you know um check box a and box c you know what i mean so so um so you get better at at talking about it. you get more comfortable and even though I do not like to hear my voice, every time um, my husband uploads every vid every um, every video, he'll upload it after I'm done to our YouTube page, so that we get the the largest amount of exposure that we can with the circumstances. Hey, Devin, nice to see you. Cass says hi. Um, <laughs> Uh, her old coach. So, um, so oh, now I forgot what I was talking about. Um, so you get more exposure, you get more comfortable talking about it, and um, uh, and so it becomes more a part of of your. I don't know what you'd call it. Your your personality or whatever and that you you know, that you talk about this, and, and it's not so, it's not so weird, but still hearing my, myself on the video is very weird, so, and you make contacts, you know, people that click in, um, might click out again, as I said, but they also might, um, start to listen to what you have to say, and be like, wow, you know, that, that really makes a lot of sense, but then you, you find other contacts, and, and we just had this happen today. Jay was, I don't know where he found um, these women who own a business, and it's right in New Milford, and their, their page describes their mission, and while um, they have an interesting business to, um, name, it, uh, <laughs> thank you. They, the business name is very interesting, and I won't um, say it. Maybe I, I should after I talk to them because we're going to go see them right after I do this. But they, what their mission statement is is, um, you know, empowering women. You're, you know, you're strong. You are intelligent. You know, you can you can do anything that you want. And I remember telling my daughter this. I said, you know. When you, as you become an adult, a young woman, you can do anything you want. I said there's only, you know, 98% of everything in the world you can do. There's only one thing. I know you say that's 99, but with the effort it becomes 100. There's only really one thing that you'll never, ever, ever be able to, to win over. And this speaks to being a strong woman, being a smart woman, protecting yourself. She's giving me the evil eye right now. That's not unusual. Um, but I said, you know, 98% of the time, a man is going to be stronger than you. And that is, that is where you, you can't overcome that because that's just genetics. They're stronger. Um, so... You can be, you know, you can be smarter. You can um, be more intuitive, et cetera, et cetera. But you just have to know that a ma uh, most men will be stronger than you. I know. I kind of, yeah. She's showing me her guns right now. Um, so I know I'm, I'm kind of going on and on about that. But I truly believe that that we raised, and I know I talk about this to a lot of um, women that have daughters, and we, you raise them to be independent. You raise them not to um, 
have to depend on someone because this the this the world this you know society is just it's evolving so quickly that they you know they have to be able to take care of themselves and and I truly truly believe that um the only downside to that is when you when you when you raise them like that as they get as they become adults they they become very difficult to live with <laughs> but it's like a perhaps a reflection of yourself and you got two alpha you know going on but anyway so 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 we found or Jay found this um this group and they're very like-minded in in how we're thinking and they're business women and I like their their um their mantra and so we're going to go see them afterwards and you just so when you're on social media you just don't know what you might find and that's you know that's that fine line that balance that you have to um find for yourself that you're there you're looking you're you're putting the word out you're you're trying to go wide and have people share you know share our um our videos our our web page you know the youtube and because the topic of treating the post acute cancer free patients is catching on we there was just the um survivor which i don't like that word uh celebration but we went and it was at at the hospital where i work and it was it was really nice it was a different venue this year and we had to bug out cuz we had another obligation just before the mayor spoke and and you know gave his proclamation and a friend of mine yesterday she we saw each other at a class and she grabbed me and she goes you're never going to believe this you know he gave this he started his proclamation and he never used the word survivors he used the word thrivers and she said you are on the cutting edge you know you are out there it's starting people are starting to think differently and you know there um, I imagine there's many 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 reasons for that you know um women are getting breast cancer and and this it, we don't just deal with breast cancer i mean it's what i know unfortunately but um you know cancer is cancer and, and a lot of the issues that that come out of it are are very similar but um she was saying you know he he described it differently and and as i said i think it's because women are getting younger, being diagnosed younger and younger. And that is, that creates a whole nother um, list of, of issues for, for um, families and, sorry, our dog. Um, you know, um, luckily for us, we had already had children, although they were... Oh, 13 and 18 when I was diagnosed and it was you know it was really hard because I felt like I took a piece of their childhood away and you know and their that innocence but some people would say your children were never innocent but anyway um you like to think they are a little bit but uh you know when if we already had children and so I didn't have to make those decisions about fertility, about, well, am I ever going to, am I ever going to have children? Do I want children? Do, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And when I talk to people who are at this young age and they haven't had children yet, I encourage them to, to harvest their, um, to harvest some eggs because you just never know what's going to happen in the future. You plan for it and, um, you, you know, you do all, you, you do all this stuff for planning, but you really never know what's going to happen, whether that future is even going to come. But you want to give yourself the opportunity to, um, to have choices. And that's, I guess when it really comes down to it, that's what we're offering is choices and discussion and 
you know, healing and then discussion and choices because if you've defeated cancer, you that, that's your superpower. You know, you've read it on the in the cartoons on the on the t-shirts. Well, trust me. If you've gone through it, you know what you know what hell is. And so why not dream? Why not try something else? You know, I showed Jay something last night after we were talking and it was it was two pages worth of things that that I had um you know, there were more uh, different bullet points and different things that I, I had written down that I wanted to achieve. And and the last one was that I endeavored to become a global um, face, uh, or maybe not this face, a, gl a global name, Champions Over Cancer, for that that population of of cancer patients that are now cancer free and with social media and you know technology i can be because you're not limited to your local area you know it might start with you it might you know it encompasses your family but then you know it's it just it does grow exponentially the people who take care of you and then if you go somewhere else for treatment and they know them and that six degrees of separation is a very true is a very true phenomenon i mean i i've met people and we start talking and it's like oh i know do you know this one and oh, yeah i know this one it's and it gets really weird because you just know one person but that person knows somebody else and yada yada and i'm rambling so but it just you know, it it just says that um, that no matter where you go, what you do, what you say, and what you do, your talk and your actions speak to your character, and your character speaks to your integrity, and and that's what we're building this business on integrity. We want to help people. We want to um, make their lives better after they've been through um, this this awfulness that is cancer, and you know, we I think it's wonderful that people are walking, you know, doing the um, walk for cancer and all that stuff to raise money for mammograms and for research and et cetera. Because if that if that was not the case, then perhaps I would not be here because. It um, all of that, all of that research has has grown um, better therapies, better technologies, better diagnostic, earlier diagnostic uh, methods, and so so there's a place for both, and we are focusing on the cancer-free aspect of it. So. That was um, that was what I was looking at, and um, what I wanted to cover in uh, the first twenty day review. It uh, and it was interesting because there's a lot of self reflection that goes on, and you know I think a lot of time, a lot of times I don't realize that I'm, I'm self reflecting because I'm not projecting it, I'm not writing it down, or I'm not talking about it. And, but when you have to talk about it, you consciously have to self-reflect and, you know, understand that either it's going to be, it's going to reinforce what you already believe and you're just going to stay the course or your thought processes or beliefs are going to change a little bit. And so your message, message is going to change a little bit. Your direction might change a little bit. But that's okay, because it's just the evolution of who you are, where you want to go, what you want to do, and I'm good. I'm good with that. You know, it's change. Someone, a, a friend of mine, told me many, many years ago that change is inevitable, and that I was very bad at it. And I, I do not. I I, I do not hold him to it in a bad way because he was right and 
Um, I'm still not there. I'll never be perfect, but I, I make a conscious effort to try to find the good in change or in a situation and work it forward and pay it forward because nobody exists in a vacuum. So that'll be it for today. I thank you for following me. Devin, thanks for clicking on. I, I really appreciate that. I hope everything is going well and it's good to hear from you. And so tomorrow is Thursday and I'm off, so I will be back live at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope all a safe and healthy and enjoyable evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Peace.